go. Hi, and welcome to this special edition of SIGS ON on the 8th Grade Center On Demand Network, where it's all academic, all the time. Um, today's video we will is for parents and students who are currently in 7th Grade Algebra. So with that being said, we're thrilled to reunite once again with our counselors who rotate that were in 7th Grade. Mrs. Flynn and Ms. McCarter, how are you guys doing? It's good to see you again. Morning. Good, thank you. Good morning. Good morning to you guys. And we have the principal of the 8th grade center, Dr. Siggins. Good morning, sir. How are you today? Good morning, Mr. Garcia and ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Siggins. So as we said, this video is for parents and students of children who are currently taking Algebra 1. Um, we have some information we'd like to share for them. Dr. Siggins, would you like to begin? Absolutely, thank you. And good morning to all of our families. We appreciate you taking the time to watch and uh, hopefully you and uh, your families are doing well right now in this very unique situation. So thanks again for taking time to watch this. Basically the, the purpose of us, we have a tremendous amount of experience of, of the staff members that you're seeing right now. We've been doing this for many, many, many years and we've, we've seen kids train uh, move through our seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. And with that, uh, we wanted to spend some time and just make you aware of something that is, I'm not going to lie to you, is a little bit of a concern to us and to give you that information so that you can spend some time and speak with your son or daughter and your spouse to uh, make an educated decision, okay? With the COVID-19 pandemic that, is, that has happened, it's obviously disrupted our society, uh, but more importantly, it's for us right now in this situation, it's disrupted your child's education. And Algebra 1 is, uh, for speaking from my opinion as a former high school math teacher, it is absolutely the most important subject that they will be taking as they continue to move through the acceler accelerated math track that, we, that they will be exploring through high school. So, uh, you know, they're doing that. They're starting their math career in seventh grade as an Algebra student. And in their most important course, because of the shutdown, they will have missed 54, almost one third of the opportunities to engage in direct instruction with their teacher, okay? Um, and that makes, that makes us nervous, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Ed has this year waived all Keystone exams. And if you're an Algebra One student, doesn't matter what grade you are in, taking Algebra One, uh, you are required to take the Keystone Algebra 1 test, and for this year, it's been waived. We have really not received any directive from the state um, whether or not your child may be required to take that again or take it uh, for the first time in a future grade. That, that has not been decided, okay? But that is a graduation requirement, and, and, and so that's kind of hanging over our head right now. You're missing almost a third of the year of instruction. You have a graduation requirement that is potentially hanging over a child's head. And uh, that makes us a little nervous. Now, I'll, I will say this to you. Most kids that are taking out for one in seventh grade are excellent students and have shown a, a pretty strong aptitude for math. Okay? That's why they're there. And when a student moves on to eighth grade, the next course that they will be taking for us is geometry. Okay, and it's uh, the same high school geometry course that uh, 9 through 12 receive, okay? My, my feeling through that, and I believe it will be uh, all of our feelings, is that those children will do pretty well in geometry next year. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be right. able to get mm -hmm. through that fairly well. The issue that Mrs. Flynn's gonna to talk to you about is really the purpose and the reason behind this video with you is when students go into ninth grade. And with that, I will turn that over to Mrs. Flynn. Thanks very much, Dr. Siggins. So hello everyone, Patty Flynn here, uh, school counselor for the class of 25. And as Dr. Siggins said, your currently enrolled um, students in algebra in seventh grade are great, uh, fine, math students. That's why they were invited to come into Algebra 1, a two years accelerated. However, um, more than likely when they move on to geometry, things will go well, as Dr. Siggins said. The concern we have, and this is a, um, a story that um, Mrs. Carter and I have been telling parents for years uh, to seventh grade algebra students, mm -hmm. and it has never been more true than it is this year with mm -hmm. this unique circumstance, is that when a student um, 
performs uh, well or in, you know, whatever in seventh grade, that's well and good. Then they sort of take a break from the algebra concepts in eighth grade to move on to geometry. And most of you remember, geometry is sort of a different animal than, as, um, than eighth grade, than algebra is. Um, here's the problem. You move from eighth grade to ninth grade. You're in the high school setting. There is one and only one option for your student to take for math in the ninth grade sense. And that course is called Honors Algebra II. Doesn't sound so scary. However, if you speak to any uh, student, they would say that more than likely in the entire possibility of courses your students will eventually enroll in, in ninth grade, Honors Algebra II is the number one most difficult course they will ever have to take in the ninth grade center. Absolutely. So that being said, now we, we walk it back, okay, to a child who has completed the Algebra I curriculum in the seventh grade, but for this particular class, they've missed uh, over 54 days of direct instruction in person with their teacher. Uh, they have not been required to take the Keystone exam, so they sort of don't know where exactly uh, they lie in terms of accomplishment and true learning of the al algebra curriculum. And on top of that, they've taken an entire year hiatus away from algebra concepts by taking geometry in the eighth grade, okay? Um, and now they're gonna be dumped into next level class in ninth grade, but oh my, it's a very, very high rigor and pace for in the form of honors algebra two. So we feel that it's um, most important for us to make sure you are fully aware of what not only will happen in eighth grade, but what lies ahead, because there are no other options for students leaving geometry in eighth grade to go into except for this honors algebra two. So part of this, and we'll continue on with this conversation for you, but part of this is to help you as parents um, to be fully informed so that you can really take a step back and think what is in my child's best interest? What is going to set him or her up for success, not only in eighth grade, but when they get into the ninth grade, when all their their courses and all of their grades count, not only in their GPA, but also uh, the colleges have view of that. Colleges have no view of seventh and eighth grade, but they certainly do from the moment they start ninth grade. So we want um, to help you uh, to fully understand what's ahead for your student. And also, we certainly want to save you from uh, the thought that, you know, a year from now, entering into ninth grade, you say, oh, gee, I wish someone would have explained that this is what uh, was going to be in the, in the, um, on the road for us. So hopefully this video will help you um, have a better understanding. And with that, you'll be able to make a fully informed uh, decision on behalf of your student. So, so Mrs. Flynn, as, we're, as, you, as I'm listening to you speak right now, one of the things, and this happens to us every year, okay? This is not just, this year it's just exacerbated because of the fact they've missed as many days as they've missed. Indeed. But every year, if a child is just, if you will, I mean, they're doing okay, they're, you know, they're struggling a little bit with Algebra 1, okay? And then they make it through geometry in eighth grade, and then also when they get to that ninth grade, if they really did not master it, if they really were not, performing extremely well in seventh grade algebra. Every year, we're gonna have kids that struggle in ninth grade. And Dr. Yes. Weidenbaugh, who is the ninth grade principal and I, we will have these conversations, okay? And, we, and she asked me about who's this kid, what's this kid like, what was the background? And she looks at their seventh grade scores and their, and their eighth grade stuff. So it is an issue every year. Okay, right. and because we know it's an issue every year, given the circumstances of today, that's why we're talking to you. So basically, the purpose of this is that you're going to need to sit down with your family and, and talk about this, okay? Yep. And, and do what is right by your child. And what I mean by do what is right, they have the option next year when they come to eighth grade to retake Algebra 1, okay? And, and some parents sure. right away, they'll say, whoa, 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 not my kid. That's the, yeah. the, my kids yeah. is great. They're not going to have any issues. And, and, and I'm not going to tell you that yet. This is your choice. What we're trying to do is to provide you with the information that potentially could come down the road. Because what, what we don't want to do is we don't want to have a parent say, 
well, if I would have known about this, yeah. I would have chosen to do something different. Right. Okay, so and we've had these conversations. Yeah. Yes, we have these conversations with seventh grade parents uh, as we get through the second semester of algebra uh, for those who are doing maybe not as well um, all the time, which is why I've said I've, I've said this uh, many, many times over to parents. But we want parents to really understand you might be saving your child in this moment, but then later on, um, your, your child is going to have a much bigger struggle. And we are not about that. We are trying to help make sure students are set up for success. And as you said, you know, we always have between one two handfuls of kiddos who repeat algebra anyway in the eighth grade. That's a given because, you know, they just haven't um, done as well as, as they would have hoped. But, um, and that's very natural. That's not really a big deal. But this year, when you when you really look at how many days away from in-person instruction they've had uh, with their teacher, that makes it even more um, important, and that makes this message appropriate to be giving to all of the parents, not just those students who maybe are not doing so great right. in algebra outside this year. And, and I'd like to say something. Um, I'm the science teacher in the eighth grade center. Um, I work with a lot of these students. Um, I do keep data of all their grades in seventh grade, eighth grade, and through the high school. Um, what I've noticed, again, in Algebra 1, the lowest grade all those kids get occurs in the fourth Martin period. So I, I'm not familiar with what they're doing in the fourth Martin period, but a lot of kids who are doing really well with like 95, 96, 94, a lot tend to drop to like that 90, 89, 87, and they still finish with a good average. And, I'm, and they do well, and I'm okay with them in eighth grade doing geometry and whatever science I want to choose. But I'm a little concerned where they've only had three, have three more periods of data on their progress. Mm -hmm. So that's something else to think about. It, it's, that is the lowest grade of the four, that fourth part period is the lowest grade from what I've seen every year. So just something else I wanted to add to that. Interesting. Yep. And, I, and I'd like to add one more thing just for parents to consider. When your child is enrolled in seventh grade algebra, right, they, the message that they're, you're sending, the long-term message that you're sending, is that by the time they are a senior, they will be taking the second year of calculus, BC calculus at the high school, right? And so every year we'll have between, you know, around 110, 115 kids taking geometry in seventh grade. And every year the final tally for that second year calculus class as a senior is around 30. Yep. So think about that. And we're starting at about 110 and we end up with 30. So along the way, yeah. that journey through high school, kids are making decisions. And that's natural because their interest yeah. rate change and so forth, right? But what I, I guess the point here is, is that, you know, this is a, a key one for you to consider. There is no harm, there is no foul if your child is you're not feeling really good about where they are. And when I say that, you know, if they're, you know, struggling with a 90 or 91 or something along those lines, uh, to me, uh, like I said, as a high school, former high school math teacher, and if it was my children and we're all parents here, I would automatically have my kid retake it. I just would. And that's just me and I'm conservative, okay? So what I'm saying to you is, we're putting this information out to you. We want you to think about it. If you say, hey, guess what? Appreciate your time. We're not interested. We want to put them in geometry. That's fine too. Okay, we just want to make you aware of something that we've seen over our time uh, doing this job. Okay, with that being said, what's going to happen is you've received an email. So Mr. Parcia, if you want to pull up that Absolutely. email, we're going to share the screen. You've received the email with the link to this video. Okay, and what we're going to have now is we're going to have Mrs. McCarter kind of guide you through what you need to do after you spend time speaking with your family and your child and, and kind of decide, you know, do I want to keep going or do I want to re retake out for an eighth grade? Go ahead, Mrs. McCarter. All right. Thank you, Dr. Siggins. Um, before I start walking you through kind of uh, the nuts and bolts, um, I want to just add, along with everything that has been said, um, it will probably the you will probably have a quick emotional response to this um, information and we recognize that um, we wish that we didn't have to even 
be making this video. Um, but I do encourage you to make sure you are stepping back from those emotions. I mean, obviously you need to feel them, you need to kind of talk things through, um, but this, you cannot make an emotional decision um, with this because that would be a, a, a concern um, because there are a lot of emotions that we recognize go into it. So I want you to take a look at the screen. This is the email that you just received or you received in order to be able to open this um, video. And I wanna just walk you through it quickly. Um, we ask you to take the time to discuss this, as I said, um, because we know that it's, it's a difficult decision for you guys to make. Um, if you decide that you are going to have your student go ahead and move on to geometry, um, then obviously we've said that's your decision. If that is the case, then we don't need for you to do anything. Um, you could just finish reading this email and, and move on. <clears throat> if you've decided after much thought and uh, probably a lot of emotion that you are going to have your child re-enrolled in Algebra 1, next year, I need for you to take a look at starting at the um, number one. And if Mr. Parsi, if you could scroll down so that we can see below number one, that'd be great. Okay. First of all, before I forget, I just want to um, draw your attention to the fact that we are asking for a response from you by Tuesday, April 20th, um, sorry, 28th. So you have some time to make this decision because um, obviously we don't want you to make it quickly. All right, so if you are deciding to have your child re-enrolled, um, take a look at number one there. You will need to uh, click the forward button. It has to be the forward button. If you click reply, it will not get to the correct person. So please be aware that you need to click the forward button. It's very important. And then what you'll do is you'll you see there um, the guidance counselors that are associated with um, certain letters of the alphabet. So you're gonna click forward, um, click the or put the um, email, send the email to the appropriate guidance counselor. Um, and then after you click forward and you made sure it's going to the right place, you'll see that we are asking for some information from you. So when you look at number two there, it has, I think it's not a lot of information, um, but it's something that we definitely need because that's kind of your um, signature of sorts that you want us to move on that way. Um, as uh, number three, before you hit send, please, please, please take a look back again and make sure that you are forwarding it and that you are forwarding it to one of the guidance counselors um, and that your information is, is all there correctly. So when we get this email, what you need to recognize is that we will make sure and we'll keep our list and, and uh, plan accordingly, you know, based on your, the email that we're getting from you uh, saying that you would like for your child to be re-enrolled in Algebra 1 next year. All right, so just to review here, uh, Mrs. McCarter, because I, you know, we've, we've been doing this long enough. I mean, uh, I know that there will be some parents, especially the parents that say, hey, I want to move on to geometry. What I want to do is I want to make sure uh, that, that you know I want my kid going on geometry, right? Everybody feels like they have to, now that you're listening to this video, I gotta let somebody know, okay? <laughs> okay, so what we're telling you is, if the default for all this is, if you let no one know, your child's gonna get put into geometry. The only people that we should be receiving emails, return emails, or forwarded emails to our counselors are those parents that would like to have their child retake algebra one, that's it. So, like, I don't want anybody panicking because I know that's a panic for, for some people, okay? Yep. If you want them in geometry, do nothing. Just know the message. If you want them to retake algebra, you got to take a couple steps and forward it and fill in that information so that we have it. That's it. Okay? All right. Great. Uh, well, Mr. Parsi, you want to wrap this up? I mean, I know this yeah. is uh, normally what ends up happening is we do a lot of, le you know, paper letter handing to students, you know, in the seventh grade, and then they have to return things to the counselors. Okay. And then there's the opportunity for phone calls. Uh, you know, there's really not going to be opportunities for phone calls right now with anybody, right? So if you have questions, uh, if a parent would have a question or want to, you know, if you will speak to one of the counselors, they can simply send an email. But you know, sure. 
no one's allowed into the buildings right now, so that's that's part of the problem of uh, communication. Okay. Right. All right. Um, to, just to summarize, you know, th this Algebra One course, as the counselors and Dr. Sigan said, is the true foundational course for math track all the way through 12th grade. And you know, the fact that we're offering this district is offering the chance to take it again. And if you look at it in one way, if they take it again, they're going to strengthen and build a deeper understanding of those foundational important skills and make sure they learn that fourth Martin period. I know the teachers are doing a great job now, but I think they can learn that fourth Martin period, which seems to be the most challenging according to the data. They learn it thoroughly. They learn it, they'll learn it again next year. They will be so much more well prepared for down the road in that Algebra two course, trig and beyond, okay? Again, this is a decision where it's a, it's a decision now, but it, it's, the payoff is gonna be down the road when it really counts on a transcript that colleges will look at. So again, think, don't just think next year I have to have my kid in geometry. If you wanna do that, that's your choice. Think, is my kid set up for success when it really, 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 really matters? Mm -hmm. And will they have a good math experience? Because again, it's all gonna build. If they have a great math experience in high school, they're gonna have a great one in college. And so please, this is a very unfortunate big decision. So we hope you found this video to be helpful. Um, as you can see, the counselors, Dr. Siggins, we all want what's in the best interest of the child. This is why we're trying our best to make sure your child has the best possible education they can get given these changing times. So uh, once again, thank you so much for watching. And that's a wrap for uh, SIGS ON. Uh, Mrs. Flynn, Ms. McCarter, it's great to see you guys again. We can't wait to have you back next year. You too. Great. Dr. Us too. That's right. Dr. Siggins, as always, it's a pleasure. Yes, sir. Yep. All right. Well, thank you very much. And Bye, for everyone. watching. Thank you for watching SIG Zone on the 8th Grade Center on the MAN Network where it's all academic all the time. Thank you very much and have a great Bye. day. Bye-bye.